Hello friends, followers and channel members. So X-Plane 12 has finally arrived for PC. Long awaited X-Plane 12 and there are many who say that X-Plane 12 will easily rival Microsoft's Flight Simulator. Now, if you are brand new to the X-Plane platform, well, join the club. I haven't been in X-Plane for more years than I care to remember, being a avid fan of FSX and of course now Microsoft's Flight Simulator. So we're gonna take a little look in this video at X-Plane 12. Bear in mind that this is not going to be a full review. I certainly haven't had time to go into too much detail, but the great thing about this as well, for those of you thinking about perhaps adding X-Plane to your collection, is that they have made a free trial available. And I think this is a great way for you to dip your toes into X-Plane 12 without, of course, having to outlay any money. To do this, of course, just go ahead to their website and download the install that you require, Windows for myself. Go ahead, get that downloaded, and because the demo is only giving you access to the Seattle area, it actually doesn't take that long to download. It took me about an hour. Of course, if you're purchasing the full thing, it's gonna take you significantly longer. Once that was all done, then I was keen to dip my toes into X-Plane 12. The one thing I certainly was not looking forward to, though, was having to set up everything with regards to the hardware. So I use the Thrustmaster Captain's Pack uh, TCA. So we've got the Airbus side stick, we've got the thrust levers, spoiler, flap axes, all that lot. And uh, having to configure these in X-Plane 12, I thought was going to take me quite a while. However, I was pleasantly surprised. Once it had all finished loading, it just puts you on the ground in the aircraft ready to start, but it takes you through an initial setup for the first time it's being launched. So it already detected, as you can see on screen here, the Thrustmaster throttle and the side stick, and basically took me through the calibration, which seemed very, very easy. All I had to do was literally follow the on-screen instructions, move the various axes and levers and things that I got, and it did it automatically. Of course, if you do don't want to use anything that you do currently have set up, you could just press the ignore this button. Once everything had been set up and explain deemed that has been sufficient and correct, the ignore me access disappears because it presumes, well, you've set that up, of course, you're now going to go ahead and use this. But for the uh, other things that you can see here, I went and got rid of those. Now, of course, it's going to be graphics that lots of people are going to judge X-Plane 12 on against Microsoft's Flight Simulator. Unfortunately, there's just no real competition. For me, Microsoft Flight Simulator wins hands down, but that is not the main reason why those of you that enjoy X-Plane 12 do fly in X-Plane. For many years, the flight dynamics, the controls, and even the stability of X-Plane has always been deemed to be superior to to Microsoft Flight Simulators, both FSX and of course now Microsoft Flight Simulator. There are those of course though who will disagree. Who's right? Well, I'll leave you guys to decide and let me know what you think in the comments down below. With regards to the flight dynamics in both X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'd be really keen to hear your views on those. The stability of X-Plane though, when I was playing through uh, around to create this video, did actually seem really good. And what I was very impressed with as well was the smoothness of the sim. Now, of course, we know Microsoft Flight Simulator is graphically superior, so it's a lot harder working on the hardware of your PC. Whereas here in X-Plane 12, it was unbelievably smooth. Didn't matter what weather setting I threw at it either, it was just smooth. There was no stuttering, no scenery, loading, popping in, that kind of thing. But of course, you are sacrificing high level quality graphics that were used in Microsoft Flight Simulator to get the performance that we do get here in X-Plane. The main menu certainly isn't as cluttered in X-Plane as it is in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here you can see just the five things to go through. And what I quickly wanted to do as well is just let you see the various settings that are available in X-Plane. Now, obviously I'm gonna just breeze through these. You can pause the video and need be, but it gives you some idea to the kind of things that you can go through and set. Of course, this is default. We can go through and uh, change any of these. So 
my videos that you're seeing here were set with all of the graphics set to high. I'm running a 3060 GTX with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So if you want to get the full specs of my hardware, then check out the about page. But it didn't have any problems running it, which to be honest, I didn't expect to have any problems running it. So expectations were met there. Now, of course, those of you who are familiar with this channel know that we're quite Airbus orientated. So the fact that x 12 comes with a supposed high quality A330 as a default aircraft really did pique my interest. We know from experience that all flight simulators do rely on payware developers to come along and give us proper aircraft for these flight simulators, just as the fly-by-wire team in Phoenix have done for Microsoft's flight simulator and the Airbus 320 fly-by-wire however of course being free and here in X-Plane we have the Zebo mod 737 but I was interested to see just how accurate and realistic this A330 is for a stock aircraft. Jumping into the flight deck then and I was taken aback to Microsoft's flight simulator's default A320. That's pretty much what this looked like on the surface just having a quick look around. We can see of course that it does indeed look like a A330 flight deck. They are of course very similar to A320s. What I was impressed with the, was that all my thrust master settings had almost ported over and worked really really nicely as you would expect them to. So the engine mode selector, parking brakes, spoilers, flaps lever, uh, all of that working exactly as it should. Great, no more headaches setting everything up everything just appears to work out of the box. A little look at the overhead then and of course that looks again as it should do. Sat here on the runway though apparently external power was available not quite sure why but there we are I can uh, I can, can forgive that. For some reason as well engine number two wasn't started so I was just going to go and get the APU on and, uh, and get that loaded. However whilst waiting for that something then caught my attention and unfortunately this was not good. So the great thing about Airbus aircraft is that all of the fly-by-wire series of aircraft have very similar flight decks and the way they're set up, similar computers as well. Why on earth then do we appear to have a Boeing FMS when we should of course have an Airbus McDo? Yes, for some reason it seems that for a stock aircraft this wasn't right and for me this is a bitter disappointment. Now I know that aircraft developers will bring out proper aircraft for X-Plane just as they have for Microsoft Flight Simulator but at least Microsoft Flight Simulator had the correct flight computers in the correct aircraft. At this point then I actually just wanted to shut X-Plane down and think well that's it contest is over Microsoft Flight Simulator wins hands down. But no, I thought I will persevere just to see how we can get on. One of the things though that I really did struggle with then was the fact that the Airbus flight control unit for use with the autopilot just doesn't seem to sync up the way you would expect it to, of course, with the Airbus's uh, multifunctional control display unit. Activate the approach phase. How on earth do you do that in this aircraft? So after a rant and a few moments stomping my feet, I finally decided to get the thing airborne and see how it flew. Actually, it flew quite nicely and a lot of things how you would expect, fly control, fly by wire controls, etc. They were all there and working, but there were just too many bugs that I couldn't get my head around. For instance, I couldn't find a way to select manage speed or uh, push in and activate nav mode. Um, so yeah, just perhaps this is a little bit of a Boeing aircraft just shaped to look like an Airbus flight deck. I didn't get too much time to spend looking at this in detail so if I am wrong please do leave a comment down below and if there is a way of course to sort all of this out then please do correct me because as I say I haven't spent too much time in X-Plane and certainly haven't been in X-Plane for a long long time. But yeah when I was coming into land just here nice ILS approach everything looked good and then for some reason right at the last minute my engines decided to spool up and well I'm not exactly sure why that happened didn't touch the thrust levers I got auto thrust speed for 
174 selected speed as you can see here on the FCU but it just didn't want to play ball so kind of wrestled this thing to the ground and yeah got it touched down but unfortunately that's where the fun part ended for me as uh, unfortunately well take a look how this flight ended I think everybody managed to survive and evacuate okay but yeah I'm surely in for a meeting with the supervisors with no tea or biscuits one thing that X-Plane does have over Microsoft Flight Simulator though right from the get-go is the built-in replay function. Now of course if you're used to X-Plane this isn't really anything new but for those of us who are just used to Microsoft Flight Simulator having the built-in replay function is just fantastic because not only does it just give you the ability to watch how bad your landing was if you actually go into the flight deck it has recorded everything as well so all of your inputs, your flap lever positions, anything that you change etc all of that is recorded so it's not just taking your aircraft through time and space so to speak it is actually a full replay of everything you do look at that wing flex though that looks quite neat the default camera views as well in X-Plane I've always found far superior to Microsoft Flight Simulators. Lots of different options giving you the potential for lots of views just at the touch of a button. So there are certainly lots of plus points to X-Plane over Microsoft's Flight Simulators. I'd love to hear your views as well in the comments down below. If you are an X-Plane fan, try and convince those of us who are die-hard Microsoft Flight Simulator fans what the real bonuses are. Of course, we know about flight dynamics and things, but what other things that perhaps we may not think of straight off. X-Plane has indeed come a long way to try and compete with Microsoft Flight Simulator and to be honest they had to because when you have such detailed graphics in Microsoft Flight Simulator to bring out an X-Plane that wouldn't compete on any level just wouldn't make any sense regardless of how good the flight dynamics are. A new weather engine in X-Plane has been introduced and you can see here the rain effects which I think actually look really rather good. I wouldn't say that these are any better or any worse than Microsoft Flight Simulators. I particularly like the fact as well that when you turn the propeller on on the ground if it's raining that the propeller does indeed wash all of the water straight over the top of the cabin. The clouds are, well, not bad, but once again, we've been spoiled with the images we're used to seeing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Having said that, many of you don't actually like the clouds in Microsoft Flight Simulator and think they mo look more like a volcanic eruption than they do clouds. Here in X-Plane, however, they are a lot more soft around the edges, so there's potential there for many of you to think that these are actually better. So again, now we've been able to compare both, please let me know down in the comments below what you think with regards to the weather engine here in X-Plane. Do you prefer this? or Microsoft Flight Simulators. So then let's just finish off with a quick look at performance. So normally when I'm in Microsoft Flight Simulator I cap my FPS to 30 and I use the Nvidia settings for that rather than Microsoft Flight Simulators. Removing that just for a play around in X-Plane today and you can see higher FPS and re not really any stutters or uh, failure to cope with anything like that. So realistically I would easily say that with limited hardware you're probably going to have a better experience with with X-Plane than you are Microsoft Flight Simulators. Bearing in mind as well, all my settings were cranked up to maximum as well for the videos you're seeing here today. So with X-Plane 12 now available, why don't you go and check it out? Remember, you can do so for free. This limits you to the area around Seattle and 15 minutes of flight time. You can, of course, do this as many times as you wish with the demo so you get a chance to experience different aircraft, different weather scenarios, and just generally have a good play before you decide whether or not you're going to jump in. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this little preview video. If you have any questions regarding explain or anything like that then please do leave a comment down below and i'm sure that those of you who are familiar with explain will be able to come back and help in the community thank you so so much for watching if you have found this video useful please do hit that like button and of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and of course turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future content and live streams one final question i'm going to leave you with though would you like to see live streams here in explain on the easyjet simpilot channel i'll await your answer thanks so much for watching guys Guys, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.